Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video, I want to go over the free-to-play options that I feel can make the most impact for your Hydra progress. Uh, I recently did a poll um, for my audience and it seems like a lot of you guys actually uh, said having some more references for Hydra can really help you guys out. Um, I know there's a lot of content out there for Hydra, um, but... Hydra is actually a really, really deep um, um, level of content for this game. There's a lot of things going on. It can be overwhelming. Um, I don't want to stuff one video with everything because I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So in this video, I mainly want to focus on free-to-play options that give you guys the most bang for your buck in Hydra in most situations. Okay? So I'll jump into that right now. All right, guys. So for the Hydra, I want to preface that um, you really want to do your Hydra so you can get the Mithrala fragments from the chest. It doesn't matter what level chest. It just you just want to get any chest um, to start building up Mithrala. Um, it's very viable to get Mithrala even before Lydia, and Mithrala might even be stronger than Lydia in some some parts of the game. Actually, well, she is stronger than Lydia in some parts of the game. Um, but depending when you get her, she can be a massive help for your account. So definitely focus on getting any chest, even if you just need to put up like small amounts of damage. Doing a little bit every every week definitely helps. Um, with that being said, the options I'm going to provide for you guys and highlight, um, I want to focus mainly on more accessible champions. Uh, I will include some login champions, some fusions, uh, but I don't want to really focus on that because I know everybody starts this game at different times in their career. Um, so they might not have access to some of these old fusions, for example, so I don't want to call them free or anything like that. But if you guys have better options, definitely jump into that. Um, I'm just going to highlight some of the champions here. So first and foremost, I'll be leaving the um, stats of the Hydras up here in the top right hand corner. The way you look at this chart and trying to make sense of it is you want your team or your champions to be at least as fast as the Hydra's speed, ideally, so that you can take turns uh, faster or at least on par with the Hydra. Um, you Getting more turns compared to the Hydra is how you deal more damage. So that's actually one thing that you guys need to know before we even start. Um, the other thing is looking at the accuracy and resistance requirements of each difficulty. For resistance, the column that shows the resistance of the Hydras, you want your accuracy to be at least their resistance. And if you are building a resistance champion, you want your resistance champion to be at least 100 resistance more than the accuracy listed here for the Hydra heads. Okay, so I'm going to leave that chart up there while I'm making the video so you guys have a good reference of what your account can do. Um, and we're going to go and talk about how um, each champion works against each head. So I'm going to jump into that. All right, so first I'm going to talk about the Head of Torment. So the Head of Torment is obviously a very frustrating head. It's um, the head that applies irresistible, fear, undebuffable, you know, you can't block it. It's just a super annoying uh, head. Um, what free-to-play champions can actually deal with this head uh, in, you know, good order? Uh, so basically the best counter to this is obviously going to be Mr. Uh, Shamayo here. He has a passive that removes the fear instantly as it's applied to your team. Um, the He has also have an added a benefit here of boosting the turn meter of your lead uh, champion. So whatever champion you put in the lead, uh, that champion will get boosted in turn meter for every buff, for every fear that gets removed. So he's a very easy, consistent counter to the Head of Torment. Uh, you even want to see the Head of Torment if you have Shamayo on your team because he boosts your leader. Um, so if you have him, build him for damage. He can do some damage for you with his A2. He can, free, um, uh, he can also be a um, kind of like... Uh, you can build him like for more late game purposes, which is like more... Uh, tanking the head of mischief which is basically redirecting the steel priority so 
so you can build him with like blood shield accessories make him um keep his buffs longer and then build him with resistance and then that way you can attract the head of mischief into targeting him uh to steal buffs but that's a totally different thing if you have shamail use him in your hydra team to deal with the head of torment if the head of torment is in your uh, starting lineup but i actually recommend using Ob um, shamail in any hydra team just for general consistency uh the other champion here that is probably more accessible for most people that can kind of deal with the head of torment is um rector draft so rector draft has a perfect veil here uh where is it perfect veil on your whole team four turn cooldown so it's not going to be up all the time uh she also brings some healing she brings attack down she brings a revive so she brings you know she brings some stuff right she brings some stuff some utility not just a perfect veil uh what she doesn't bring is damage but uh yeah for as an option to deal with uh the head of torment she definitely works um perfect veil doesn't work perfectly and definitely doesn't work as well as um shamail uh, but she is an option if you have her definitely use her against Tor head of torment uh, lastly, the other option I have is from the same faction is actually Doom Priest. Doom Priest might not be considered an option, but she has a passive uh, random debuff removal. So uh, similarly, Tuhana Rock has a very similar uh, passive, and she works very well against uh, Shamail. Uh, uh, sorry, against the Head of Torment. Doom Priest works in the similar way where she can remove the Fear debuff um, since it's it, since it is irresistible. It makes sense to run Doom Priest in a team with block debuffs so that you can limit the amount of debuffs on your team um, to only the fear debuff and then it can be removed by her passive here. Uh, she also brings increased attack which is really good, boost the damage of your team, uh, speed aura if it applies, um, increased crit rate doesn't really matter but mainly she's here for the heal and the remove. So these three epic um, champions can deal with the head of torment if you have better options definitely use them but i'm trying to uh, highlight some more free to play friendly more accessible champions here all right so up next we have the head of blight this is the um hydra head that basically applies the poison cloud which makes all your hits uh deal non-critical hits uh so none of your hits can apply their debuffs or abilities um, if you have a specific set like provoke like provoke set or curse set you can actually go through the poison cloud but overall this head is very very annoying to deal with especially when the poison cloud is applied um, the head of blight also deals kind of significant damage to you because all their attacks are kind of like aoe and they deal uh, they apply a bunch of poisons to you um, so you can kind of mitigate that by using block debuffs or having a cleanser on your team. So that's one way to deal with uh, this head. But I'm going to highlight another way to deal with the cloud. So the cloud is applied to the Hydra head. So having somebody that places block buffs is very critical. Uh, not only to the head of Blight, but you'll see some of these champions mentioned for all the other heads as well. Block buffs is a crucial, probably the number one um, debuff that gets brought against hydra it's under, like it's definitely needed it's definitely needed so i'm going to highlight some champions here the most accessible and probably the best champion for block buffs is going to be uh, from the ogren tribes uh, my vote for the best epic high best hydra epic in the game is ugo uh, she brings the aoe decreased defense and the block buffs together on one move on a three turn cooldown so that's kind of important the three turn cooldown is very important because you don't want a long cooldown on this because you need the block buffs very very frequently and you don't actually you kind of need to save this in some uh, some situations like for example if the head is decapitated and the head is spawning soon you kind of need to apply the block buffs right away so having a three turn cooldown is probably the maximum that you want four turn cooldown champions with block buffs is gets a little bit dicey uh, but ugo is definitely top top tier for hydra if you have her make three of them if you have them Brings the A1 leech, AoE decreased defense, and the block buffs. Even a soft cleanse here. Um, this not so important, but the soft cleanse is very nice and the big heal. Very, very good champion, um, especially for Hydra. I mean, as an epic, she's MVP in a lot of areas. Um, 
but yeah, Ugo should be in every team um, if unless you have something better. There's uh and and I don't think a single champion replaces her, so you need like a a good team makeup to replace her. Um, so that's my number one uh, accessible block buffs champion. Uh, coming in uh, recently, another recent addition actually was actually Wukong. Wukong is actually very viable as a AOE block buff champion. The AOE part of the block buffs is actually very important because many of the heads get neutralized by block buffs. You'll see that block buffs is actually one of the most important debuffs you can apply to the Hydras because it affects many of them. So if you can put the block buffs on the whole Hydra team, then it's very good. Sun Wukong works if you give him some accuracy. He's also a decent damage dealer. He's not an insane damage dealer, but he's decent. So you could have him built in damage with block with accuracy to apply this, or you can have increased accuracy to give him more accuracy to apply this. Uh, whatever works. But Wukong is a very solid, uh, I would say, kind of accessible um, since he was free recently. Uh, AoE block buff champion. Next champion uh, that I feel it deserves to be built and used and is quite reasonably accessible would actually be Uko. Uko is maybe a year old now. Uh, he was a past fusion. He's very, very good. He has the AoE speed aura. He brings an AoE decrease attack on the A1. And then he has a strip and then the block buffs. His strip and, his strip and block buff is good because it's on one move. It's bad because it's a four turn cooldown and the block buffs portion of it is conditional so when the hydra head spawns for example they place a protected buff on themselves uh, to reduce damage um, when when they re when that happens that respawn situation happens the block buffs can't be applied anymore so he's not a consistent block buff champion but because he brings so much else in his kit he's actually definitely worth it to bring in as a block buff but running him by himself as a solo block buff might not be the best situation all right, the next option you have for AoE block buffs is actually from the Demon Spawn um, for Epic. She's an uh, Umbral Enchantress. Void uh, Champion is good because she can't weak hit, uh, meaning that she'll always apply her block buffs. The negative about her is that she doesn't bring any damage. Um, obviously, a little bit, uh, a little bit squishy, uh, and she does. You know, she's basically here for this three-turn, 100% AoE block buffs. Okay. She does have a five turn AoE provoke, which can be useful uh, because one of the heads can be provoked and it's kind of important, um, but she doesn't really bring much else. Her A1 doesn't do anything, it's a single target hit, so it's mainly just down to her AoE block buffs on a three turn cooldown. If she is your only option, she's good, she's fine, but you definitely want to improve upon her because she doesn't bring much else to the team. Uh, but as a option, she's definitely good. And as a void champion, she's solid because she won't weak hit, uh, which is important too against some rotations. All right, so the other way you deal with the Head of Blight is actually with HP Burn. So you, if you apply HP Burn and then the Poison Cloud is applied, then the, the Hydra with the HP per, Burn on them basically still receive normal damage and the Cloud uh, doesn't have any effect. I don't want to go through all the HP burn champions, but I want to highlight a couple of them that are pretty good. Uh, Artak stands out. He has the AoE HP burn, and then he has the AoE decreased attack, which is really good. He has more AoEs as well. So you can basically build him um, in, I don't know, if you have provoke gear, you could give him provoke gear. So now he can be an AoE provoker. Just an example, or hex gear, for example. Um, I want to highlight a couple other ones that have are kind of more special. Um, dwarves, even though he's not AoE, Geomancer dealing with the single target uh, apply on the HP burn can actually apply through the Poison Cloud. So because it's a it's a place, it's not a hit. So since you don't hit, you don't have a chance to weak hit. Any champion that has a place can still place the HP burn through the Poison Cloud. So keep that in mind for what you're choosing. Geomaster is just an insane champion for Hydra. He deals more damage the higher difficulty he gets. So keep that in mind when you're choosing him as well. Another champion that actually has more utility as well is actually Drexar. So Drexar gets, uh, applies the HP burn when he gets hit, uh, which is really good, just passively applying the HP burn. He also brings an AoE provoke and decrease attack on a three turn cooldown. It's not 100% to apply the provoke, which is you know unfortunate, um, but on a three turn cooldown, it's actually really solid and on one single move, 
um it's he's a great champion for hydra just to deal some passive damage um i mean for for lower difficulty of course and of course he's free and accessible to everybody so that's a huge bonus and he definitely works decent against the head of blight uh just for this um, application because he doesn't need to hit right he just passively applies it all right so for the head of mischief this head um, basically will target the champion with the most buffs and then attempt to steal the turn meter and buffs from that champion um, this head's super annoying if you don't know how to handle him the best way to handle him uh, without specifically handling him is actually bringing block buffs so the head of mischief will steal your buffs but it doesn't get applied to him and then he can't spread those buffs so that's one way to deal with him the other way to deal with him is actually to remove the buffs which is not preferred but if you have a champion that can do that that's just an extra insurance policy so for example we're going to highlight some wukong again he has the remove all buffs uh, on, on his uh, a3 ability so he definitely can double up there as a buff removal as well um, as a free option uh, we have rion rion can do that as well with the a2 so on a three turn cooldown remove all buff apply weaken has the a1 block buffs as well it's single target but it's extra utility 75 percent chance only and then of course he has a single target revive um, accuracy in all words i mean it's decent free champion right but uh, definitely usable for that application uh, as a buff remover the other way you must uh, bring the other thing you must bring to deal with the head of mischief is actually hex and hex is something that doesn't uh, show up in the game very often so it's kind of limited and especially if you're working with free champions it's a little bit more difficult to find hex champions for accessible champions that have hex um you probably want to look at i mean mithrala mithrala is going to be like top top tier for hydra with the aoe hex and then the double buff increase attack increase uh defense and then the cleanse and shield she's awesome um but I think this guide might be more helpful um, for people without Mithrala. So I'm not going to include Mithrala here, but if you have her, definitely use her for Hex. Um, if you don't have that, um, obviously Cursed Gear on an AoE um, champion makes a lot of sense as well. But I'm going to assume you don't even have Cursed Gear. Um, so I'm going to say for a Hex champion that makes sense, it's going to be a Kentum. A Kentum has a... A2 that has a 75% chance, yes, yeah, 75% chance of applying Hex, uh, AoE. I mean, yeah, this works. Um, he can deal some decent damage too. He applies poisons and all that stuff. Uh, at lower difficulties, he can do uh, quite a bit of damage. It's not, it doesn't have great survivability or anything, so it's going to be a little bit hard to keep him alive. But there's just not too many options with Hex uh, just popping around in this game right now. So he works... Uh, in that role the other way you deal with the head of mischief is basically building a specific champion to deal with it and the way you deal with it is basically building one champion with high resist um, and having that champion have more buffs applied to them or stay on them um, and then basically that will bait the head of mischief into attacking it and then getting resisted then no buffs will be stolen no terminator will be stolen for example how this works is you have to choose champion that uh, either has a blood shield accessory so that gives them one extra buff or has a ability that self buffs themselves uh, just an example here uh, of what i'm talking about um, <clears throat> i'm going to choose islin here so islin actually places a counter attack um, and a shield on himself so he places two buffs on himself so he'll have two more buffs than the rest of the team uh, giving him um, obviously a higher chance of being uh, targeted by the head of mischief okay so he's a good uh, champion to have to build as a t as a mischief tank to bait the mischief attack all right so up next we have the head of decay so the head of decay is actually the only head that can be provoked it's an extremely annoying head probably the most annoying head because it cleanses the whole team uh, cleanses the whole hydra team uh, also places a heal reduction on one champion which is actually kind of annoying too um, if your team doesn't have cleanse for example um, but uh, the head of the cave brings two abilities with cleanse a single target cleanse with the big shield super annoying because it can at the wrong time that shield 
can protect uh, a Hydra that ate one of your champions, and now you can't free that champion anymore. Uh, and his second ability is a team-wide cleanse. Um, he also has another passive ability that um, reduces your team's max HP when your team heals up. So it makes your team a lot squishier. So this head is for sure a priority kill head. Um, if you guys are new to the game, definitely try to target this head and kill it right away. It's going to be a lot of problems. However, being provocable gives us some control over this champion. So I'm going to give you guys some options here to deal with this head. Dark Elves, <clears throat> we have Visix. Visix is a login champion. <clears throat> I believe she's the last login champion, 270 days. Um, but she's actually an incredible Hydra champion. She's free. She's actually incredible. She's, I mean, she's actually just an incredible champion overall, to be honest. Uh, when I got her on my, on my first account, I used her extensively. She cleared Faction Wars for me easily. She cleared Doom Tower waves. Like, she pushed me to new limits in my Doom Tower progression. Just an incredible champion. She has the AoE Provoke on a three-turn cooldown. That is exactly what you need. 100% chance. <clears throat> it also places a shield on herself as well. Gives her a little bit of survivability. And then she brings an AoE Decrease Speed with Ally Protection on a three-turn cooldown. Decrease Speed is actually one of the most important debuffs you can put on the Hydra heads. Um on any team you must bring decreased speed or at the very least increase speed increase turn meter um, and all that stuff but decreased speed uh, definitely helps so she brings that her a1 doesn't do much against hydra very useful against like dark fae or fire knight normal for example but doesn't do anything against hydra but <clears throat> both her aoe's are actually insane definitely use her if you have her um, i mean i use her in like i think one of my hard or brutal teams just for like max damage she keeps the team alive she brings the important debuffs very very good champion the other champion i want to highlight again is actually <clears throat> drexar so like i said drexar brings the aoe provoke brings the aoe decrease attack which is really good uh, just a general good debuff but the provoke is not on 100 percent, so he's not going to be used as the main provoker here uh, moving on i'm going to go over some other options here that might uh, you might have uh, from past fusions for example um, so here, uh, I just touched upon this champion, but Islin. I love this champion. I actually use this champion uh, in one of my uh, Hydra teams as well. He brings sim He's similar to Visix, but he's actually a, an improvement over Visix. He has the three-turn, 100% uh, chance to decrease speed, same as Visix. And then he has a um, big protection move here, placing a counterattack and shield. It's not super important, this move. Uh, depending on how strong your team is, it's not super important, but it does make him a consistent mischief tank, which I just covered. So basically, you build him with resistance. After he places this move, he will have two extra buffs on himself. He will be baiting the mischief uh, head into attacking him and then failing to remove his buffs and turn meter. Then you have neutralized the mischief head with this champion. His A1 is an A1 provoke, double hit, double hit chance to provoke very very strong 50 percent chance each time so that's like 75 percent chance to land a provoke on his a1 and because he counterattacks, he actually has more chances to do it pair him with an ally attack champion that gives him even more opportunities to place the provoke but an a1 provoke excellent excellent provoke champion if you have him definitely use him for your hydra teams Another champion, past fusion as well, Bivold. I love this guy. His A1 also a provoke. It's a single hit, brings a little bit of a heal, so it's not as good as Islin's provoke. However, he does have an AoE provoke here, three turn, 100% chance, and it doesn't weak hit, which is awesome. It doesn't weak hit. He provides leech, which is like an S tier uh, buff or debuff uh, that your team needs to survive. Um, so he's an incredible champion as well. More survivability with the shield here as well. Past Fusion, you might may or may not have him, but definitely use him. He's incredible. Um, some epic options for you guys. Uh, Undead Husk. Husk brings a lot. He brings damage. He brings the AoE, double hit, provoke. Like I said, put him with ally attack um, or just use him as a backup provoke. He can work in that regards. Um, another champion that doesn't get talked about much is Seeker. Seeker has the A1 double hit provoke as well. 50% chance similar to Islin. So he has, uh, I believe, 75% chance to land the provoke. And then he brings turn meter buff with the increased attack. And then he has a conditional uh, increased defense. This is really good because this basically speeds up your team, gives your team more turns. 
and he's just a great um you know team champion you more than likely will have a seeker uh, compared to the other champions I mentioned, so definitely use him as your provoker. Keep in mind he is magic affinity, and he will you know have a harder time against the force affinity uh, head of decay. So keep that in mind when choosing seeker. And a quick shout out here to the I believe most recent Amazon Prime champion Gizgard. This guy is actually really decent. Like he's actually a really decent champion, and more than likely, you guys might actually have him. He has a three-turn provoke here. It's not a hundred percent chance. It's only seventy-five percent chance. But he also brings um, some other utility as well: increased defense, increased attack on a three-turn. Very solid. So he's going to make your team stronger. And then he brings a decreased attack on his A one, which is really really solid as well. So I mean, he's an option, right? He's an option. You of course prefer this to be one hundred percent but he's an option he's an option that works and it's definitely going to be a more accessible option for you guys here uh the least accessible i think is having a provoke set so if you have a provoke set you can put it on a, a aoe champion that can definitely help you that might be a backup option since it's not 100 percent um but yeah those are the ways you can kind of um, deal with the head of decay keep it under control uh it's such a pain in the butt for, um like as a hydra head is a pain in the butt to deal with so uh, hopefully those options help you guys out all right guys so up next we have the head of suffering so this is the super tanky head um he doesn't really do too much he has a interesting different mechanic where he does a double turn so keep that in mind if the head of suffering eats one of your champions uh he's slower than the rest of the the uh, hydra heads but he does take a double turn so that's a little bit annoying when he eats one of your champions and you only have a two turn counter for example the other thing that he does is he boosts the resistance of the entire hydra team by plus 50 so when he's on the field you might have a hard time landing your debuffs for example um also the other ability that he has is he strengthens them with the ally protection that he applies and then he puts a uh, reflect damage on himself so keep in mind this reflect damage from him can actually kill your big aoe damage dealers so it is a little bit annoying when he has that reflect damage up. You can't really use any big damage dealer, um, big damage abilities against him. Um, but he's generally some uh, generally one of the heads that you can kind of ignore. Um, he's super tanky, so he's hard to kill as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a little bit tricky to deal with him. But um, he basically brings not too much else so the way you deal with him is basically uh neutralize the worst parts of him which is basically i think his um his block uh, his reflect damage because that's going to limit you quite a bit if it's up you can't really use your big hits so bring a block buff uh champion like wukong uko ugo uh umbro those were probably the ones that were mentioned earlier in this video uh, and then you can kind of deal with um, the head of suffering relatively easily um, but i would say it is the lowest priority head to worry about in this in uh, out of these six heads i want to say honorable shout out here for um, lydia if you have lydia lydia is actually really good for hydra she can bring the decreased defense and weaken increased speed strengthen so this move is like absolutely insane obviously she's void so she won't weak hit but she also has a single target block buffs here so having her as a backup block buffs uh could be helpful right and you want to prioritize the head of suffering which i just mentioned here and the head of wrath so both of those have the um big big buffs uh that you want to uh stop right away no matter what so if you have literally no block buffs on your team lydia with the single target can help you in a pinch so i'm going to give an honorable mention for her in the block buff champion category all right guys so the last head we're going to talk about here is actually the head of suffering so the head of suffering you guys probably have met your end very often to the head of suffering he hits super hard he has a predetermined counter of how many how many hits he takes before he hits uh before he hits you he also has an aoe provoke against us against the our team uh which basically uh suckers us into hitting him and then getting his timer up and then he'll do his big slam uh, he places increased attack on himself and reflect damage as well as block bu block debuffs. Um, to neutralize him, you have to use a similar strategy bringing in your block buffs champion. So like I said, somebody like Sun Wukong 
with the buff steel and block buffs definitely is useful here to stop the head of wrath from gaining increased attack and blowing up your team um so not, obviously the other champion here that you want to bring would be ugo ugo is very good in the block buffs category the other thing you want to consider when dealing with the head of wrath and making him a little bit easier to deal with is actually decrease attack decrease attack for the most part is not really necessary if your team has some survivability or leeches applied or healing um, but bringing a consistent 100 percent um decrease attack um would really make the head of uh, wrath here hit uh much more manageable so you definitely don't want uh the head of wrath to hit your team with the increased attack so you either bring block buffs to stop the increased attack or you bring decrease attack to make sure that the head of wrath does not one shot your whole team so there's going to be a lot of different champions that deal in uh, deal decrease attack uh, ideally you want a three turn cooldown decreased attack that is applied 100% of the time okay guys so like for example um ursula if you have ursula she's an insane insane champion she's actually really good for hydra as well she brings the aoe decrease attack on a three turn and an increased attack so she helps boost the strength of your team and then she brings increased defense strengthen and a team revive so having a reviver in your team definitely helps against the head of suffering which can blow up your team so having uh, some extra insurance against that definitely helps ursula is very very good for hydra as well definitely somebody that uh, deserves to be on a lot of teams so like i said guys there's going to be a lot of different uh, increase or sorry decrease attack champions in the game make sure you guys bring one that kind of fits uh, and brings more buffs different buffs different debuffs compared to the rest of your team to complement your other team champions i don't want to make this a team building video but i just wanted to highlight a couple um, free to play more accessible champions that are universally good against hydra and if you guys are having trouble with Hydra, definitely build them out. Give them a try and try to put your team together in a way that brings multiple debuffs, multiple buffs, and they all complement each other. If you don't have a damage dealer, bring a damage dealer. If you don't have enough supports, bring the proper supports. Bring the proper debuffs, right? Bring the proper, proper buffs. Um, if you have one damage dealer, you might need another damage dealer to free that damage dealer if it got if it gets eaten. So make sure you bring two damage dealers, for example. Um, but yeah, that, that's for another video. Hopefully you guys got uh, some useful information from this uh, video. I know it's a little bit more of an elementary, basic um, kind of walkthrough or guide. But I think there's definitely some good takeaways here. And I definitely hope that it helps uh, people that uh, need to progress through Hydra because we know Hydra is very important, especially for collecting all that juicy uh, soul stones and the stone skin gear, all that cool stuff. But anyways, guys, appreciate your time. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about my suggestions. If you guys have any standouts yourself, let me know in the comments. Love to read them. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.